Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. Glad, uh, glad to see folks are out. Uh, so, spoiler alert, we have a midterm on Friday. Uh, so, we've got a lot of material to cover this week, right? We've got all this stuff about vectors and dot products and cross product. But before we go there, I just want to ask, do, is there things people would like to know midterm wise? Midterm questions, thoughts, things we like clarify. Yes? Just to confirm, the sections that it's covering are 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. I have no idea. Okay. I just have zero idea. Sorry, I have not memorized the sections of the book. Uh, so I'll stop you there. Uh, we're covering all of the stuff from weeks one through three. Okay, so all of this stuff is covered. All of the stuff in weeks came Okay. Yeah, so everything in this list up to 4.3. Okay. Cool. Thank you. And the thing that we're, we're the thing that we're avoiding, what was the thing that we were avoiding according to the announcement? 1.4. 1.4. We're gonna avoid 1.4 because it's just really, really hard. Uh, and we'll, we'll come back to it when we have more theory to handle things. Um, okay, other things people would like to know? Yes. Will there be proofs questions? Will there be proofs questions? Um, have, okay, have there been proofs questions so far, in your opinion? There was like, like in lecture we checked a thing, right? In lecture we checked that a particular curve was a circle. Right? That's, that's kind of a proof, but no, you won't have to prove anything like you knew, there'll be no like, you know, derive Einstein's field equations, you know, be like, they're just similar to the homework. Okay. The plan is that we've selected questions from the textbook, changed the numbers slightly, and then made them into a midterm. Okay, so it's going to be very, very similar to the level of the homework uh, they've been trying. Are there other things people would like to know? Like full disclosure, I'm also nervous about the midterm. I don't even, like I I made it and I'm nervous, so it's natural to be nervous about these things. Um, but I, I think I think that you're well prepared. I think that we've we've covered the relevant material. I think that we've got all our bases covered. And um, okay, very good. So uh, right, so we'll 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 sort of cover. This stuff with the exclusion of polar area. We're going to come back to polar area later on in the course. Um, so just for a sense of where that is, uh, we're going to schedule. So this section here about change of variables, which we'll do in week nine. We're going to come back and. Revisit polar area in week nine. But uh, yeah, all the material from weeks one through three is fair. Um, okay. Sweet. Very good. Um, so, what we've got uh, on the plate today is the material about vectors, dot products, cross products. There's a lot of material here. We might not finish it all today, so we might come back to it. Uh, next week and do a little bit more about vectors, but uh, we'll get the we'll get the basics in. We'll get we'll get started on this. Okay, so um, who took that course? Vectors and ca calculus and vectors, grade twelve course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So for lots of people, this will be review. That's good. Uh, if this is not review, that's still okay. We'll, we'll tell you everything you need to know. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we're going to get into vectors in the plane. So a vector is a way of describing a direction of travel. Okay. The etymology of the word vector 
is that it comes from a Latin word meaning carrier. So the idea is that we <coughs> carry things along vectors. So we, I don't know, we start off in Toronto, we move along a vector, we wind up in Montreal or something. Uh, so there's this notion of direction and distance that we travel along. Uh, so we, we have points in the plane. Oh, we don't have colored chalk though. is a pair of real numbers that describes the coordinates of some point. The thing I want to draw your attention to here is the round brackets. So we're using round brackets to denote positions. And so we might have y round. Hmm? Y round, because that's what our textbook writes. It's just a convention. Uh, in 232, sometimes we use, or 223, sometimes we use square, right? It's a convention. Okay, so points are places, they're positions. Okay? A vector is a way of moving between two positions. We have two points in the plane, P and Q. These are some spatial positions. Now we want to find the, the direction of travel between them. Okay, to denote that we're looking at a vector, we put a little arrow above the thing that says we start at P and we wind up at Q. Okay, so this arrow points out that we were looking at a vector. And the way that we do this is we plot both points. Okay, so we go from 1, 2 to 3, 4. And the direction we want is this guy. So what we do is we subtract uh, P from Q. us is to go from here to here, we need to move two units in the x direction, two units in the y direction. Right? We go two units over this way and two units up this way. Okay, let's see. This is review so far. This is all right. People are okay with this notion? Sweet. Uh, right. So there's just this, this tricky point about the, the angle brackets. 
Um, the, the sort of the subtlety is that vectors, <coughs> vectors at points, they almost seem interchangeable. <coughs> right? So, So to go from the origin to 2 to 2, we travel along this vector. And to travel from 1, 2 to 3, 4, we use the same vector. to say that these two things are equal, right? To say that 2, 2 is equal to 2, 2. It's sort of a special, a special way of writing down vectors. This vector can, can transport you many different places. is we can either write them in these Cartesian coordinates or we can think of them as lengths and directions. So we've got a notion of length for vectors. We, we apply the Pythagorean theorem to the two components, and we get sort of a measure of length out of it. a vector with some particular properties. Uh, we want a vector with length 2 that makes a particular angle with the, with the axes. Um, we want to set up something, some kind of equation or something that will give us a vector like this. somehow of polar coordinates, right? We've got a notion of length, uh, a notion of angle. So we're going to come up with Cartesian coordinates that have those properties. So 
So one way to do this is to use our, our formula for um, the polar coordinates. Calculate cos uh, pi by 4 and sine pi by 4, we get 1 over root 2. How can we check that this is a reasonable answer? So these are my, my values for, for cos and sine. And then I'm multiplying them by this two. And yes, if it looks like a typo, please, please, please call me out on it. Um, I'm very slightly dyslexic, and it will just totally derail the lecture. Um, OK, so we're here. So we get this guy. Um, right now we want to measure at this length. Okay, well one thing that we notice is that it looks like a, it makes a pretty good angle, right? This looks like 